is Yanga Sonji, a.k.a. Bobby Yanch, a.k.a. Jesus Lover. I'd love to thank everybody for joining me today. If you are new to the channel, I welcome you with open arms full of love. Welcome to the family of Jesus Christ. Don't forget to like, to subscribe, and to comment. If you are a returning subscriber, a regular degular, thank you so much for your love and for your support. I appreciate you guys. Um, everybody, I'd like to remind you, I need to see feedback from you. I need to see the comments. I need to see the likes because it's such things that will help help the channel to grow and i believe through the grace of jesus christ and through your love and your support we will get this channel to be where it needs to be guys we truly truly need to support christian vloggers because there aren't that many of us out there and um, talking about christ is a very hard thing because this is like a, an unpopular topic the world doesn't like to hear about Christ, but we cannot keep the gospel to ourselves. We cannot keep the good news to ourselves. The good news have to reach out more people. And this channel cannot reach out to a lot of people if we don't like, if we don't comment, and if we don't subscribe. So please go help you go out to do what the Lord has called her out to do, which is to preach the gospel and to reach out to more souls. Thank you so, so much in advance. Okay, so last time we spoke about the identity of Jesus Christ. And oh my goodness, I think I was kind of nervous because, you know, I'm still trying to get used to talking in front of, camera, of the camera. But I think my nerves have calmed down um, since the last time I posted. So, okay, I'd like to quickly do a recap of what we spoke about last time. So we, we spoke about who Jesus Christ is. I do tell you that Jesus Christ is the word of God that came in human flesh to die for our sins and to, 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 to free us from the bondage of sin and to save us from the wrath of God, from the judgment of God that we deserve because we deserve God's judgment. We deserve the punishment for all the bad things that we did, but Christ took that punishment upon himself so whenever we we come to him we are accepting that gift that free gift of eternal life that's why we say we are saved this is what we are saved from we are saved from the bondage of sin and we are saved from the judgment of God that we deserve so Christ is the only way to the Father Christ is the living water he is the head of the church he is love he is the judge he is the judge of the living and of the dead. He is the ultimate sacrifice. Um, because after him, there's no need to sacrifice any more cattle, any more sheep. No sheep, no cattle, no goat can take away your sin. But Christ took away our sins because his blood is powerful, more powerful than all the, uh, the blood of the animals put together so his blood was able to do what no blood of any animal um, could ever do no blood of animal can give us salvation so christ is the ultimate sacrifice he's the living sacrifice he's the prophet he's the highest priest he is the living god he is the firstborn from the dead he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the second Adam because he did not come to this world through sex. Just like Adam did not come to this world through sex, Jesus also did not come to this world through sex because he was born of a virgin. Um, Jesus is God. Where is Jesus right now? He is at the right hand of his Father in heaven. He is there interceding for us. He resurrected on the third day after he died on the cross for us. So we have to keep in mind that he is a living God. He is no longer dead. He only died for three days and he was not killed. He gave, he gave his life for us. He gave his life 
for us freely so that he can pay the full price for our sins and that we may be sa saved from the judgment of God that we deserve. So if you read the Bible, you'll find that, okay, after the human beings fell into sin, God redeemed mankind through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ dying on us on the cross was God's grand plan to deliver us from sin and from the eternal judgment that we deserve. Okay, so with that being said, I've noticed that every time I speak to Christians about who Jesus Christ is, and even when I speak to non-Christians, even people that um, believe in Muslim, in other faiths like Muslim, Hinduism, and stuff like that, they all say yes, Jesus, they believe in Jesus, but when you listen to the identity of the Jesus they believe in, it's a totally, totally, totally different Jesus. He is a stranger. We don't know that one. Or oh, I don't know that one. He is not the Jesus of the scripture. But it saddens me and it amazes me that there are born again Christians who have been walking with Christ for the longest time, but still are confused about the real true identity of Jesus. They are holding on to a Jesus who is not the Jesus of the Bible. A Jesus, oof. okay, let's discuss all the Jesuses, all the Jesuses out there, okay, the different Jesuses out there. But before we do that, here's a scripture that I want us to keep in mind. These are the words of Jesus Christ when he was warning his disciples about the false prophets and false teachers that would be coming in his name to spread a false gospel. Luke chapter 21, verse 8. And he said, See that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them. So, as you can see, we have been warned. So, you see, we have to be careful about which Jesus we are serving. Are we truly serving the real Jesus? Okay, so there's many Jesuses out there. And um, there's one popular one that I would like to talk about first. This Jesus is loved by the world because this Jesus, he loves everyone. He wants everyone to go to heaven. He doesn't judge anybody. He is think positive, self-help self-made man-made jesus who is like a comfort zone for for sinners he is a comfort zone for sinners this jesus says come as you are and remain as you are this jesus doesn't convict people for doing things that are are against the word of god this jesus um he blesses relationships that are fornicating he doesn't say you must flee from fornication, no. But he blesses those relationships. This Jesus doesn't change people who are in sin to be new creations in him. If, uh, if a gay man comes to this Jesus, this Jesus accepts that gay man the way he is and he remains gay forever and ever and at the end of the at the end of this gay man's life this gay man goes to heaven despite sleeping with other men and engaging in other sexually immoral activities but the jesus that i know the jesus of the bible he doesn't say come as you okay he says come as you are but you cannot remain as you are Come as you are, but he will change you. He will create you into a new creation because his blood is so powerful. It washes our, our sins away and it removes whatever dirt was in our eyes, preventing us from, um, from identifying the filth of sin. This Jesus of the Bible, he welcomes you as you are. But you don't remain the same person. You become a new creation in him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 
Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. But I see many of us, many people have, have turned the Bible into a self-help book where people just cherry pick their favorite um, scriptures and neglect the scriptures where God is warning us against sin, where Jesus is warning us against sin. Many people like to skip over such scriptures where God is warning us against sin. Scriptures such as 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 to verse 11. Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor the adulterers or the adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. You see, we don't come to God filthy. We don't come to Christ filthy and remain filthy. We come to Jesus Christ filthy, but he washes us. He washes us clean with his blood. He washes our sins and our desire to sin with his holy blood. We love the scriptures where Jesus is telling us about love and forgiveness and grace. But we, we neglect scriptures where he talks to us about, about hell, where he, he warns us that only those who do the will of his father will enter the kingdom of heaven. We ignore his, um, his commandments, his, his two commandments. And guys, if you look clearly at the, at the two commandments, love God with all your heart and all your strength, with all your mind, and the, the, the second one, love your neighbor as you love yourself. If we look at those two commandments, they are a summary of the Ten Commandments. But that is a topic for another day. We ignore where Jesus is telling us that he did not come to change the commandments of the prophecies, but he came to fulfill them. We, we ignore the part where Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. We, 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 we neglect the parts in the Bible where God is telling us not to, to, to engage in certain uh, activities. But we, 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 we want to cherry pick uh, uh, the, our favorite scriptures where God is telling us that he will bless us, that he will always be with us, that um, he has forgiven us, so those are the type of scriptures that people like to focus on, the type of scriptures that people like to hold on to. Not the scriptures where God is telling us to flee from sin, and if we don't flee from sin, we will have to face judgment for our, for our actions. Because for each and everything that we do, there's a consequence. And there are deadly consequences for neglecting the commandments of God. Yes, God is good. God is good. No one is good but God. God is just. God is holy. We have to know that. God is good. God is just. God is holy. Let's not just focus on God is good. We have to understand that God is just also. And God is holy. And because God is just, he has to do something about sin. He cannot leave sin unpunished. God is not this old grandpa that sweeps sin under the carpet. No. God is just, and because he is just, he cannot let sin go unpunished. The penalty of sin is death. Somebody has to die to reconcile the wrong. Somebody has to die for the sins. So, as born again, as born again believers, Christ already died for our sins. 
But if we turn our backs against the word of God, against the commandments of God, against the will of God, and do as we please, then we are fortifying. It's like we are neglecting the gift of life, the gift of, gift of eternal life that Jesus has given us. As born again believers, as born again Christians, Jesus already paid the full price with his own life for our sins. And those who are not um, accepting Jesus Christ, those who refuse to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they will pay with their own lives. They will pay with their own lives on Judgment Day. They will have to, 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 to face judgment and face um, torment for their sins forever and ever and ever in eternity. I don't believe in once saved, always saved. But again, that is another topic for another day. But I, I, I don't believe that Jesus takes away the gift of eternal life that he has given us. That he has given us those who believe in him. But I believe that you can take someone's gift and go throw it in the trash can. So I believe that that's what born again believers do when they neglect the word of God, when they neglect the commandments of the of the of the Lord, and start doing things, ungodly things. I believe that that those people have taken the eternal gift of life that Jesus Christ has given them and threw it into the trash can. The following scripture supports my thinking. It is one of the scariest scriptures in the entire Bible, in my humble opinion. This scripture is found in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 to verse 27. For if we go on sinning willingly after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin but a terrifying expectation of judgment and of fury of a fire which will consume the adversaries. The Jesus of the Bible, the Jesus that I know, the Jesus that I trust with my salvation, says, be holy for I am holy. He wants us to live holy lives. He is not a God that just accepts us the way we are and let us, gallop in sin, swim in sin, slide in sin, whenever we feel like it, without thinking there'll be any consequences for our actions. So with that being said, we have to understand that because Jesus is holy, we have to be holy. That is the real Jesus of scripture. Not the Jesus of this world that embraces sinners in their sin, the Jesus of this world that um, is okay with us fornicating, the Jesus of this world that is okay with us having kids outside wedlock, the Jesus of this world that is okay with us stealing, lying, the Jesus of the, this world that is okay with us being gay. No, that is not the Jesus of the Bible. What makes Christianity so different and special from other religions? If you look at, at other religions, it's all about what you can do. But what makes Christianity so different and so special is that it's not about what we can do, but it's about what Jesus has done for us. He did it all. He paid the full price. He is the only God that came to us. All the other religions is about working hard, working hard and doing certain things to get to, 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 to God. But our God, he humbled himself in the form of human, in, in the form of humankind and came down to us. 
So it's not for um, it's not about what we can do in Christianity, but it's about what He has done. So most religions try to reach out to God, but in Christianity, God comes to reach men. Only Jesus is good enough to go before God and trade places with us. Only Jesus, not our ancestors, no, not not uh, your, your, your sangoma, your traditional healer. No, only Jesus is good enough to trade places with you and die in your place as a payment for your sin. You see, most people like to make the mistake of thinking that they are good. They like to make the mistake of thinking that they are good. But the Bible says no one is good but God. All have sinned. All have sinned and fallen short of um, fallen for, short from grace. And no one is righteous. We are born into sin already condemned. But Jesus comes to save us from the condemnation. Some people like to think that um, by coming to Jesus, it will make their lives better. And that couldn't be further for, from the truth. Because we have to understand something. Jesus did not die on the cross for us to be rich. He did not die for our bellies. He died to save us from our sins and to free us from the bondage of sin and to save us from the wrath of God that we deserve. Not from poverty. He did not come to save us from poverty or from our troubles. And if we think that by coming to Christ, our lives are going to be better. We are deceiving ourselves and that will cause us to, to lose faith in the long run when we see that we're not getting everything that we would want to get. Because we have to understand Jesus is not a genie, guys. He, he like He's not a genie. You can't just go and just rub uh, a jar and say, Jesus, Jesus, I wish, I wish. No. He is not a genie. He is not our servant. He is not our servant. We are his servants. He is our master. And only his will prevail. We have things that we wish would happen for ourselves in our lifetime. But we have to understand not everything we want, not everything we pray for will happen. Because God's will prevails not our will but his will and by thinking that our lives are going to be better when we come to christ we are only fooling ourselves guys think about the christian the christians in in countries where it's dangerous to be christians think about the christians in china do you know that the christians in china once they come to christ they can actually lose their lives they can be killed they can be jailed for a long time they can lose family members the same applies for christians um in muslim countries when a, a muslim rejects and turns their back on allah and come to serve jesus they 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 they, they risk losing families they risk losing their lives now how is that a better life how is that a better life Let's stop looking for good for for for, for um, rewards of like from Jesus on this earth. When he's speaking about rewards in scripture, he's not literally saying he will reward you you on earth. When he's talking about all the wealth that you are storing up for yourself, he's not talking about wealth of this world. He's talking about heavenly riches, heavenly worlds heavenly rewards that you will receive after this lifetime we like to focus on the now as christians but we should not be doing that it's not about the now it's about the the life after this one it's about our eternity after this lifetime because as christians we have to understand that we all going to die we are just Visitors on this earth, we are all going to die. Believers or not believers, we are all going to die. This life is short. This life is brief. We cannot be living for this life. What matters more than this life is eternity. Is It is the afterlife. And most of the things that Jesus Christ promised us, 
we will reserve we will receive not now but in the after life so coming to jesus will not automatically automatically make this lifetime better no it won't if it does well good for you well for me personally ever since i came to christ my life has been much better i've seen god's fingerprints everywhere in my life i still continue to see them till this day but that will not be true for everybody it depends on god's will for you it depends on god's will for you so remember just keep that in mind that coming to christ will not automatically automatically make your life better it might that might be the case for some people but it, it's not the case for all christians because it's not guaranteed jesus never promised us a better life on earth so we can't make him a liar when we get disappointed, when we don't receive all the things that we were hoping to receive. So a lot of people like to leave out the wrath, the judgment, and hell, and anything else in the Bible that doesn't bring them peace and joy. That's a major issue because if you don't understand what you are being saved from, chances are you're not going to appreciate what you have in Jesus. We are not served from problems and poverty, but we are saved from sin, the bondage of sin and the judgment and hell that we deserve. Am I clear? But if you don't understand that, if you don't understand what you have been saved from, if you are delusional, you're under the delusion that Christ saved you from poverty and from, 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 from problems, then you will not understand and you will not appreciate what Jesus did for you on the cross because it won't make sense to you. But my worry is that you will lose faith. You will turn your back on Jesus and you will go around preaching the gospel of the devil saying there's no such thing as Jesus. I was born again for five years because I thought my life was going to be better. But you know what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. I was still suffering. I was still underpaid. I was still unemployed. I was still, you know, whatever problems you are facing, they were still there because you missed the whole point. You missed the whole point of the cross. You missed the whole point of why Jesus died for us on the cross. You have not understood the true reason behind the death of Christ on the cross. And that is very, very dangerous because it's clear that you missed the whole point of the cross. You misunderstood it. You don't know Jesus. Because if that's your thinking, if you think that Jesus Christ died so that you may have a better life, wealth, health, and all your wishes granted, then it seems like you're not worshipping the Jesus Christ of the Bible, the true Jesus Christ, the true Son of God. You are worshipping the Jesus of the world, the modern Jesus, who is all about um, peace, love, joy, happiness, who is all about... Um, improving your life and improving yourself who is amazing who makes life amazing that is not the jesus of the scripture and if you thought this is who jesus is you need to go back to scripture and read the bible to find out the true identity of christ or if you're lazy to read you can go back to the first video i made who is jesus part one it will give you a clear picture of who he is and what he died for he certainly did not die for our bellies for our wealth and health and for our problems to go away but he died for our sins and to save us from the judgment and hell that we deserve the real jesus the real jesus of scripture the real son of god the real word of god never promised us a better life he never promised us wealth on earth but he did tell us that there will be trials and tribulations. That there will be trials and tribulations. And if you look at what I just told you about the, the believers in China and other Muslim countries losing their lives, losing families, and etc. You can see with the, with, the, with the way that 
the lives with the way of life of those Christians, you can see that life is not easy for them. Life is not better for them. In fact, coming to Christ only made this life more harsher for them. And um, I, 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 I love, love, love how they still remain true to God, even to the point of death. I love how they still remain true to Christ and hold on to him despite all the challenges life is throwing at them because they truly understand the true reason, the true reason behind the, the cross, the, the whole point. They know the whole point of Christ dying for us on the cross. They know he did not die for us to, to, to be rich and to be healthy and to be problem free. Because the, the, the true rewards of Christ come after this lifetime, not in this lifetime. The real Jesus of Scripture promised that he'll be there for us throughout the storm. He will be there with us throughout the storm. That's what he promised us. Even when we are going through hardships and trials and tribulations, we are not alone. He is there with us. He is carrying us through. He did not say there wouldn't be trials and tribulations but he said he'll be there with us the people that believe in this jesus of the world the jesus that died for us to be rich and healthy and wealthy and problem free when they see that their expectations are not being met they lose faith and they leave the church and they go around cursing jesus because they never truly knew him to begin with and okay another jesus that i would like us to talk about is the jesus of the Jehovah Witnesses. Hey, that Jesus is shocking. That Jesus is not a God. The Jesus of the Jehovah Witnesses, he's not a God, but he is an angel. In fact, he is the Archangel Michael. He is a God, not the God. He is a God, not the God. And he can only save you from some of your sins, not all your sins. You have to become a Jehovah's Witness and um, do the works of the Jehovah Witness religion in order to be fully saved from your sin. The price hasn't been fully paid by this Jesus of the Jehovah Witnesses. But the Jesus of Scripture, the Jesus of the Bible, the true Son of God, he paid our sins and he did it all. He did it all for us. He, 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 we, 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 there's nothing we can do for our salvation. There's nothing we can do. Even me preaching the gospel on Facebook to my friends, here on social media, on YouTube now, it doesn't add on to my salvation. Whether I was quiet about um, the good news of Christ, I, like I would still get to heaven because I accepted the price of Jesus Christ. I, ex I, ex uh, uh, I accepted the, the, the price of eternal life when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I let myself be filled by the Holy Spirit and I repented. Uh, I, I'm a new creation in Christ, not because of my strength or my, my brain or my whatever. It's all because of Christ. I, 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 I have nothing to brag about the kind of person I have become now because this is none of my doings. It is all Christ. He did it all. He did it all. I do not wake up and say, oh, I will not have sex anymore. Oh, I will not um, drink alcohol anymore. Oh, I will not lie anymore. I did not plan that. But Christ did all of that for me. He took away my sexual drive. He took away my thirst for alcohol. He took away my love for sin. Christ did it all. So the price has been fine, fully, fully, fully paid by the Jesus of the scripture. And now let's look at the Jesus of the Normans. I don't know if you are aware of the Norman faith. Usually the Normans in South Africa that we have, they like to, to dress in white shirts and have ties. Um, you, they usually have some white people, young men, r riding around in bicycles, visiting homes. I don't know if you've seen them, but I've, I've, come, I've come across 
um, them um, on multiple occasions. They are sweet, but however, the Jesus of the Norman belief, the Jesus of the Norman religion is not the Jesus, the true Jesus of the, of the Bible, the true son of God. This Jesus of the Norman, yes, he is the God, but we can only, but we can all be gods in this religion, in this Norman religion. Here, Jesus is divine, and so, and so can you. You can also be divine, just as he is. There's many gods in this religion. Jesus is one of many. He is um, our spirit brother. He came just like um, we we be, we can become just like him. Sorry, we can become just like him if we become Normans and do the works of Normans. Um, they also have a lot of extra scriptures. They don't just stick to the Bible. They have a lot of other man-made scriptures outside the Bible. It's very confusing. Um, this thing of the Norman Norman faith uh, uh, with their Norman belief. Now let's look at the Jesus of our. Okay, let's look at the Jesus of the Muslims. The Jesus of the Muslims. He's not a god. He did not die on the cross, but he's a prophet who was taken up by G, by by God to heaven. So that Jesus of 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 the Muslims did not save us. He did not contribute to our salvation none whatsoever. Um, be, and when I think about the Jesus of, of the Muslims, he reminds me more of Elijah. Elijah, not Jesus. So we we also don't know that Jesus of of the Norman, oh, of, of, of the Muslims. So we shouldn't get excited whenever we hear people of from different faiths um, and religions saying, oh I know Jesus, I believe in Jesus, because they might as well be talking about a different Jesus that we know nothing of. A Jesus who's not a God, a Jesus who never died for us, a Jesus who's an angel, a Jesus whom we can all be like, a Jesus who's just a, a, a spiritual guide, a Jesus... Yeah. A, yeah, a just a man-made Jesus. So we have to dig deep. Which Jesus are you talking about? Are you talking about the Jesus of the scripture or the Jesus that you guys made up? And yeah, and and, and the last Jesus I would like to us I would like us to talk about is the Jesus of our own imagination. <laughs> um. So this Jesus is the Jesus that the world likes. Because if you don't like the holy, righteous Jesus and the just Jesus of the scripture, why not make up your own Jesus? Sadly, that's what many people like to do. They make up their own definition of Jesus that they want. And this is the most Jesus, the Jesus of our own imagination. The Jesus who loves everyone and who saves everyone, whether they believe in him or not. The Jesus who will never ever judge anyone. Despite the scripture saying Jesus is the judge of the living and the dead, no, this Jesus will not judge anyone. He he doesn't he does what everyone wants him to do. So basically, this Jesus is a servant, not the master. He's the servant. He is not the God, but people are the gods of this Jesus. Because if you can say, "Hey, I want a Gucci bag," and boom, here's a Gucci bag, you are the God of your God, and he is your servant. So this Jesus of our of, of our imagination, he is not a God, but we are gods to him. We tell him what to do. We give him commandments. Do this, do that. So that is the Jesus of our imagination that the uh, that the majority of the the the, the 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 world love. And this Jesus, you know, he 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 he's so obedient. He listens to a form of, what what is this? affirmations confirmations affirmations i don't know i'll do my research and i'll come back to do um this um i'll come back to do a, a video about these confirmations and affirmations they sound more like commands to me like telling a jesus what to do like really like okay it's very confusing 
this Jesus of our imagination. But the world loves him because you know what? He likes you. He likes you exactly as you are. He likes everybody. And he understands your flaws and your mistakes. And he's not he's not trying to get you to move from them but he wants you to stay in your mistakes he wants you to stay in sin he wants you to do whatever makes you happy so we have to like dig deep into ourselves and ask ourselves which jesus is it that we are worshiping which jesus is it that we have put our salvation in because chances are we are serving different jesus's and every time someone speaks about jesus he's not speaking about the Jesus of the scripture, the true son of God. So we really have to be careful about such things. And we have to also um, introspect ourselves, how we, feel, how we view Jesus. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to hearing from you. Please continue to support your goal to help this channel grow. So thank you so much everyone for your love and for your support and thank you for staying with me throughout the entire video. I love you so much, but Jesus loves you even more. Goodbye. Be blessed.